Welcome to the Chronicles told by the Oracle. Cases of the missing, murdered, and unsolved. I'd like to thank everyone for joining me today. And don't forget, all source information for today's case can be found in the description box below. And be sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Let's get started with Chronicle number 40, the case of Pamela Hobley and Patricia Spencer, a Halloween mystery. Journey back to 1969, cruising in your Plymouth Roadrunner listening to I Heard It Through the Grapevine or Some Smooth Crimson and Clover, wearing your new fringe suede jacket, wishing you were heading out to Woodstock, but instead cruising over to the all-new burger joint Wendy's to try some all-beef, never-frozen burgers, finishing up, heading to the cinema to catch the love bug or paint your wagon, laughing with your friends on the way home before spending some time with your family and then turning in for the night. Tomorrow holds the thrill of dressing up and trick-or-treating for some. Others will be heading out to Halloween parties and making memories with friends to last a lifetime. For two families, a fun Halloween night would turn into a lifetime of heartache and tragedy as two young girls vanished and are still missing to this day. Pamela Sue Hobley was a bright and loving 15-year-old young lady who grew up in Oscoda, Michigan with her mom and three younger sisters. Pam, as she was known to family and friends, had flowing dark brown hair and brown eyes, standing 5 foot 6 inches and weighing 115 pounds. Pam's mom, Lois, was a single mother who worked at a local restaurant to support her family. On October 31, 1969, after taking her younger daughters out for a night of trick-or-treating and fun, she would come home to find her oldest daughter had not yet returned. Lois knew Pam was going to the Oscoda Owls homecoming football game and to a Halloween party afterwards, so she was not too worried when her daughter wasn't home yet and thought things had just run a little over. However, as the night continued on with no sign of her daughter, panic set in. Lois would call her friend, starting with her boyfriend, who had recently proposed to Pam, and now was her fiancé. He would inform Lois that Pam had not shown up to the game nor the party. After calling more friends, Lois would learn that another classmate of Pam's was also missing, a 16-year-old young lady named Patricia Spencer. Patricia Ann Spencer was a 16-year-old who attended school with Pam, and although the girls were not known to be friends, they seemingly left school that Halloween day after a bomb scare was called in and the school evacuated. It is unclear if the pair signed themselves out or left when the school was being cleared due to the threat. There was no bomb found that day, and it was deemed a Halloween prank, and classes resumed. Patricia, who went by Patty, stood five foot four inches, weighing 120 pounds, with brown hair and blue eyes. It is unclear why the two females left school together when they were seemingly not friends. It is speculated that because the girls left school at the same time and knew they had time to spare before the football game and party, they decided to hang out for a bit. That October day, Pam was wearing a three-quarter length imitation white fur coat with brown trim a long sleeved blouse with ruffled cuffs, a brown and white plaid skirt with white knee socks and chunky shoes with a thick heel. Patty was wearing a green and plaid jacket, a brown sweater with matching brown tweed or plaid skirt, brown shoes with a thick heel, and a silver necklace with a peace sign pendant. Neither of the girls had any identification on them, nor did they take their purses when they left school. Pam has a scar on the bridge of her nose and a birthmark on the left corner of her mouth. Patty does wear glasses, but at the time she left school, she was not wearing, nor did she have them on her. Patty also has a scar from a dog bite on one of her legs. Where were the pair going? Did one of them have plans to meet up with someone? And if so, was it Patty, as Pam was recently engaged? It should be noted, at the time, Wurtsmith Air Force Base was located in Oscoda, and the Air Force Base was said to make the town's population bigger by 3,000 with civilian and military personnel. Could Patty have been headed to see someone there and Pam was just going to hang out with Patty for the time being as she was skipping school and had nothing better to do? These are questions that sadly will more than likely never have answers. As the night went on, Lois knew something was not right when her daughter had not returned home. She would phone the police along with Patty's parents and they would report their children missing. 
Like most cases in the late 60s and early 70s, the police would deem them runaways. They believed the girls may have taken off to Flint, Michigan, as there were some rumors flying around town, so there was not much of an investigation done for them. A man would come forward, according to him, the day after the girls were reported missing. This man would tell police he had given the girls a ride to a gas station on the corner of River Road and U.S. Route 23. He worked at the gas station located in downtown Oscoda. However, this would not come out until May of 2013, and the police could find no record of him telling police this back in 1969, so they would re-question him and clear him of any involvement. Why was this statement not taken more seriously back then and looked into? Was it bad police work or just a different time when teens ran off and started over so there was no real sense of urgency when young women went missing? Either way, it's baffling. The final time the girls were sighted was around 2 p.m. on Friday, October 31st, 1969, when the man dropped them off in downtown. It has been said that the girls were hitchhiking that afternoon, but it is unclear if they continued to do so after they made it to downtown. If they did continue on to their destination, could they have been picked up by someone or more than one person and taken somewhere? It is one theory police and the public have. There were no leads in this case, and it would grow cold until 1985, when an anonymous tip would come in saying the girls were killed by two local men and buried near or under a barn known to locals for horse shows and high school parties. This could have been a good lead, however, it was not followed up on in 1985. It would take several years before police would go to the dilapidated barn and excavate. Cadaver dogs were brought in. No scent would be found. The dog's handler did say it was possible it was because it had been so long and the dog could not pick up a scent of the girls. It is said police plan on doing more excavating near the barn. However, they have not said when. In an article found by the Bitter Endings podcast, link below, a man by the name of Ron Collins was mentioned. He was in a band that was located in Flint, Michigan. The band would come and play a lot of gigs in Oscoda. It is unknown if police talked to this man or why he was mentioned. Is it possible this is why police believe the girls had run away to Flint? Could Patty have been hitching a ride that Halloween afternoon to meet Ron, and Pam decided it would be fun to go with her? These are things that are simply unknown. The girls' families believe they are deceased, and they would just like them back to give them a proper burial so their souls can rest. Lois, Pam's mom, and Arlene, Patty's mom, have both passed away without ever knowing where their daughters went that afternoon. Mary, Pam's sister, goes back to Oscoda often and places new missing persons flyers of the girls in hopes someone will come forward with new information that can bring two heartbroken families closure. In a 2013 news article, Mary would tell a reporter, quote, someone in this town killed them, end quote. When the reporter asked Mary if that was something she felt, Mary replied, quote, it's something that I know, end quote. Are the rumors floating around a small Michigan town for several years true? If so, please come forward and give these families closure. If you have any information about the disappearances of Pamela Hobley or Patricia Spencer, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-843-5678 or the Oscoda Police Department at 989-739-9113. I want to thank everybody for joining me again. And be sure to hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe so I can continue helping families of the missing, murdered, and unsolved. As always, this is the Roracle, signing off. <laughs>